Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Vangelis, and it is with a small sense of half-national pride that I present a look at China's titan protector, the triplet-powered Jaeger known as Crimson Typhoon, another member of NECA's opening three-figure wave for Pacific Rim. The Red Whirlwind's digitally sourced sculpt comes off looking way more dynamic and way less... squished than Gypsy Dangers. Perhaps it's thanks to the different design aesthetic, but this figure just looks more oomphy and chiseled than its American counterpart. Crimson Typhoon also fares far better in the paint department. The red is still a little streaky, but the it's weathering fallback works better here somehow, in part because the hue of the red feels much stronger than Gypsy Danger's off blue. The gun metal is expectedly awesome, and the yellow stripes and tampos look pretty sharp for the price point. Also, the glowing turbine face paintwork is fantastic on mine, loading the toy's visage with personality. Although I still can't believe that tiny vestigial mono face is the frigging cockpit. The unfortunate quality shared between Crimson Typhoon and Gypsy Danger would be its lack of accessories. Once again, I didn't mind until I saw the film and realized this guy so needed alternate buzzsaw hands. When I looked at Gypsy Danger, I kind of just blew it at the beginning that Gypsy Danger's posability was not something I really enjoyed. Crimson Typhoon is the complete opposite story, man. Let's start off with the head. This thing is on a visible double ball joint. The collar basically has a ball on either end. The base of the neck and the base of the, uh, the head have sockets. And this is a huge range of motion. This thing can waggle its cranial reactor everywhere because surely that isn't a cockpit. That would just be a silly place to put such a tiny vestigial thing on a giant robot what fights monsters. His shoulders, all three of them, are ball jointed with, uh, well, a decent range of motion on this one. Uh, the back one here has a decent range of motion as well using a, a barbell ball double joint ball joint connect. This one though, it has the double balled barbell, but it's like glued in place in some way when you get this out of the box and can only really swivel forwards and backwards. So me and some other crazies broke all the glue and got this thing free so it can move around more more freely. The thing is, it also comes off super easy because there's like almost no room for it to move around. It feels like at the last minute it was realized how easily this comes off and a decision was made to just fuse it in place on one end of the ball. I prefer it free, but bear in mind that once you free it, you've kind of got to push inwards when you're moving it around or things could get a little bit embarrassing. Now, going to the big arm for a second, the elbow is a simple hinge, but unlike Gypsy Danger, it actually bends enough to be noticeably bent or straight. So that's a huge plus. The larger claw hand is on a uh, thick, creaky ball joint. It's pretty stiff, it spins, it wiggles. The uh, two smaller arms are pretty much identical. Uh, they've got a hinge on the elbow. Uh, this doesn't have a full 90 degrees of motion, but it does still have enough motion to, unlike Gypsy Danger, look different when bent. Uh, the wrists are not on ball joints, they are instead on straight hinges, which is a little bit weird, but actually, I, th I think... I think I'm okay with this, though I am super bummed out that I can't swivel the wrists to the point where I'm not sure which of these methods I prefer. Gypsy Danger had a fantastic abular ball joint. Uh, Crimson Typhoon has a fantasticer, magnificent, magical barbell double ball joint in its ab. You can see the thing in there a little bit uh, through the socket. The amount of range accommodated by that open seam is simply, lucidly, fantastic crazy, and I love it. And I'm gonna stop going on and on about that, because uh, I got a couple other double ball joints to talk about, those being in the hips. So these are both really good at going forwards and backwards, but outwards motion is actually somewhat doable. It's not amazing, it's like 45 degrees tops, but the upside is you can also get a little bit of a thigh swivel out of this connection because there's so much uh, open space around the ball. And this helps out quite a lot uh, because he's got full articulation in the legs right out of the movie design. The two knee joints, which can't fully straighten out, but I don't, I don't think I mind that. They curl up nicely, and when straightened out this much, it looks pretty cool. And there's another straight hinge at the ankle. These all only move in one axis. They don't tilt sideways in any way. And that would kind of suck Except that because you can get the thighs to come outwards just a little bit, this guy can get some pretty good play once you figure out how to get his feet planted. And uh, the the amount of posability in this dude, it is 
great. It's not fantastic, but this is what I expect out of a modern action figure based on a movie what came out in 2013 that's full of robots. And this feels okay. Crimson Typhoon's posability uh, is everything, well not everything I guess, but it's, it is leagues above Gypsy Danger to the point of feeling like everything I wanted out of Gypsy Danger. I just love that this guy can stand squat or he can straighten the legs out and dude can kinda hold himself up like that. Nika did a good job on jointing this guy. I feel like maybe because these were made in a, in a pre-production state, this was just a more logical jointing system to figure out. Um, but this, of the two Jaegers, this dude won in posability. And I love it. Oh, one thing to be aware of. Like the Nika Big Daddy, this thing here, it's glued in to the chest. And sometimes the glue is not all that great when you get them out of the box. So, uh, mine just came off, so I had to glue it back on. Sadness. First world problems. Turn that into some joke about China. I don't know. I'm gonna walk away from this. <laughs> oh, crap. Crimson Typhoon blew my mind. Mostly because it does so many things right where Gypsy Danger went wrong. This is the figure of the line so far, and worth picking up regardless of one's interest in Pacific Rim. It's beefy, it's decently posable, despite the absence of some key swivels I'd have loved to see, and it's loaded with personality. Fans of the film will be happy to know that this figure is of legitimate quality, but if you just dig weird robot toys, I'd recommend checking out Crimson Typhoon if you get the chance. He really scratches that itch with his three arms and crazy grasshopper legs. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and I've got a pair of Jaegers who've got nothing to do. Never fear, Titans of the Pacific. It's time to get monstrous. It's time to get kaiju -us.